Let's do some news. My name is Mike B, AKA Phony. This is chat. Say hello, today's date. Say hello to today's date. July 18th, 2019. Notifications are turned off, thank you for asking. All right. Hello everybody. We're doing this on a Thursday. If you're watching this on YouTube, it might be Friday for you. We're doing it a day early because I'm going camping for the first time and I'm gonna have fun. If anything, I'm gonna be drunk. So that's gonna happen. At the very least, that's going to be the minimum of my experience, is that I was drunk. Uh, and so, yes, I'm looking forward to that part, at least. Uh, so today we have uh, a number of wide-ranging topics to discuss, but I think the first one we should talk about is actually a relatively serious to topic. Relatively is like the wrong word to use there. Uh, it is a very serious topic and actually comes out of Japan. Some of you guys may or may not have heard, uh, but there was an arson attack at a, excuse me, at a... Um, at an animation studio, uh, Kyoto Anime, Anime Studio. Now, uh, I didn't know who they were off the top of my head. Um, obviously, I don't watch a lot of anime, One Punch Man, Red, Red Line, and that's kind of like the extent of it, right? Uh, but uh, I did, I did, I would get to go ahead and pull up the, uh, the to see like who, what do they produce? And they have a sheet, like their production sheet between movies and uh, and shows is massive. Like this, so this, so to to the layman, this is not some small, you know, startup studio. This is a this is a studio that has done quite a bit of work and clearly has had a pretty significant impact on uh, on the anime community. Um, uh, thank you, Sandra. It says that they're also an education facility. We don't know a lot of details. Outside of what you see here in this tweet here, uh, it says nearly 30 confirmed or presumed dead after man sets fire to uh, Kyoto uh, Anime Studio. Uh, we don't really, again, we don't really know a lot outside of uh, one, there's one uh, witness report that they heard the arsonist who has been caught, but I guess he's in, uh, uh, he's in critical condition or something. Um, but one, one, one gentleman, 61 year old gentleman said that he heard the arsonists say or repeat that you stole it, you copied it. Now, that's kind of like all we officially know at this point because this did uh, just happen. Um, I mean, just hours ago, really. Well, I mean, yeah, like, like 12 hours ago, really. Uh, but everything else beyond that, as far as I know, has been speculation. Um, that's all we know. It's this now. This is just to put this in perspective, and this is something that somebody else did for me, and I appreciate it. Uh, this is like the biggest tragedy in Japan in like decades. Uh, living in the states, or even paying attention to like you know the states' news, we know we have our issues, right? With uh, with stuff like this, um, with shootings and, and all this good stuff overseas in Europe, there's attacks and everything. Like we've become almost so, uh, desensitized to it that I looked at this, I was like, oh man, that's like, that's terrible. That's, that's tragedy. And then I kind of moved on. I didn't really think, I didn't really think about what that, what that looks like from somebody, uh, from the perspective of somebody who lives in that country, who has not seen anything happen to that scale in so much time. Like that's, that's, that's huge. Uh, and so, and so, yeah, it's, it's, we're obviously, they're still going to have to go through the, the, the nearly 30 confirmed. This was as of 529 AM, which as of this recording is, uh, exactly 10 hours ago. Uh, there's probably more since then. Uh, this is a witness who saw the attacker being approached by police, told Japanese media that the man admitted to spreading gasoline and setting the fire, uh, with a lighter. She told, NHK public television that the man had burns on his arms and legs and complained that something had been stolen from him. Yeah, so that's, that's the, uh, is that the 61 year old witness or is that another witness? Do they, do they actually say that? Cause the only thing I've ever, the only thing I've seen is that one, is that one single witness account that, uh, that he did say, uh, something about something had been stolen. And again, everything we do beyond that has just been purely speculation. Uh, and so unfortunately, like we don't really know uh, all the details from this, but we'll probably get, uh, more, going, you know, appear in the next couple of days as they, uh, uh, as they, you know, assess the, the damages and whatnot. Cause right now, right now in Japan, I believe it's, uh, it's, 
uh, it's definitely nighttime. So, you know, usually when stuff like this happens, as, as somebody who lives in a country where tragedies happen all the fucking time, uh, t typically what ends up happening is the next day is when you get, uh, uh, the next full day is when you start getting, uh, you know, more, more information because then, you know, people are able to go, the, the fire's put out or the, the area has been cleared for ash for, for the actual inspection or the uh, investigation and all that stuff. And so we'll start to see more more news come out of this. Now, there are some, uh, uh, there are some GoFundMes. Uh, I'm not going to link any of them here because I don't know, I, I haven't done my research to see which ones are the legit ones or anything. Uh, if you guys feel like you want to uh, donate to, uh, to, to help or support, there's a number of ways that you guys could probably go about doing that that are through official channels. You could maybe buy the anime uh, or you can maybe, if you can find a um, you know, GoFundMe that you believe to be legit, then you can probably go through there. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's a rough one to, uh, to, to wake up to. It's a rough one to experience, I'm sure, uh, be living, you know, if you're living in Japan and whatnot, but, um, but yeah, just, just not a good, uh, not good news, of course. So, so yeah, uh, now we have to, like, shift gears into other news, if you guys don't mind. I would like to talk a little bit about, let me see, what do we want to jump into first, next? Let's talk about... Let's talk about Nintendo, just a little bit, uh, because there's some news last week. This is basically kind of a follow from last week. Last week we uh, didn't really have a um, uh, uh, we didn't have a news show because the biggest news last week was that the Nintendo Switch Lite was released. That was that or not released, but that was was announced. We didn't really have anything else to talk about that week, so I was like, you know what? That's the biggest news. We're not gonna do news. We're gonna play video games instead, and that's pretty much how the day went. Um, well, now. They're actually adding to that. So first off, yes, there is a Nintendo Switch Lite. It does not have a dock. Uh, it cannot be docked, as far as I'm, as far as I know. Um, and the controllers do not do not come off. Uh, it does have significantly better battery life than the original edition of the Switch, which we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and and there's a couple other a couple other uh, items there as well. That I mean, really, if you're just looking for a portable game system that can play Switch games, and that's all you really need it for, then the Nintendo Switch Lite is going to probably be uh, the solution. Uh, Smaller screen has a D Yes, yes, right. Oh, it also has a D-pad. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Overall, the entire unit is much smaller than the actual Switch itself. Uh, and also, the price point is a lot smaller than the actual Switch itself. So you save $100 uh, by, uh, by picking up the N Nintendo Switch Lite. And it shows you right handheld mode only. Okay, sorry, I could have scrolled down just a little bit. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then, as you scroll down, you see this right here? Battery life? So the HAC1, which is the first edition of the Nintendo Switch, has a battery life of approximately 2.5 to 6.5 hours, unless you're playing Diablo 3, in which case your battery life is like 45 minutes. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. Um, <laughs> so there's a new model that's coming out, the HAC001. 01. That is going to have a 4.5 to 9 hours uh, worth of battery life. It says battery life depends on the games you play. For instance, a battery life of approximately 5.5 hours for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And it says the previous one is 3 hours. So that's that's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot of hours of, of being mobile. I, I have not. I have. I, can, I can't say that actually. I could say that very infrequently have I had to actually use or actually uh, use an external battery source for my Switch. Uh, but it has happened and it was like critical that I needed power because it was like I had nothing else to do like when when Jen my wife was in the hospital uh, Some months back or some yeah some months back um, You know you're there all night I needed the battery power and it would have come in handy instead I had to run a long ass cable to the wall that disconnect the life support machine pull that out and then plug in my my switch so I could charge it and actually you know play video games while I was sitting there because it was boring but <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, so there's a new model coming out. So if you have not bought a Switch and you're waiting and you're waiting to uh, 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 to pick one up because you think the Pro version is coming out, well, it might be, it, it may or may not. We don't really know, but we know that we're at least getting a battery refresh uh, on the existing models. So, well, the uh, the existing uh, in-store models. So make sure you look out for the product serial number that begins with. Okay. There you go. XKW. That is your key to getting the correct switch should you want to go and pick one up. 
Now, Nintendo is fielding a few issues with their Joy-Con. I have not experienced this issue. I know there's quite a few of you guys who do have a, uh, who do have a Switch. Uh, but apparently, and this is by hundreds, thousands of accounts, uh, the left Joy-Con, the, act the actual uh, uh, thumbstick, tends to drift to the left a little bit. And it's, it's, it's something that they started talking about on the Switch subreddit uh, some months ago, but didn't really get traction. But today and yesterday, this is week, this week basically, it's getting a lot of traction. Uh, Kotaku picked it up. Talk, discussing Switch owners share horror stories on trying to fix the Joy-Con drift. There's articles all over the place uh, talking about how the left Joy-Con drifts. And it's basically become, it's essentially become a recall issue. If this was a vehicle, this shit would be recalled, right? You go in, you get it fixed. Uh, I have heard that you can actually call Nintendo and they will fix it for you like by shipping a new one or you send it back or something. Uh, I have no idea what the process is there. But this is how much of a widespread issue it is, is that sellers on Amazon are actually putting together and selling kits. And this one has 382 customer reviews. Now we can say with confidence that maybe not every single one of those is an actual purchase, but I will, I could probably say with confidence, maybe half of them are actual purchases, probably more, right? Uh, so that, that to me says that this is an issue, like so much so that they're actually making a kit for this kind of, for, to, for doing your DIY, your own repair for this kind of stuff. You bought my account <laughs> before the shit even hit the fan. Oh, so you did, um, give me a switch that won't cram my hands. Okay. So you, did you, uh, uh, experience issue? Oh, before, before the shit even hit the fan. Okay. Like a year ago. Yeah. 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 Who was in charge of the left side? <laughs> Can they put a new battery into it? That'd be great. Uh, no, they did recall the left Joy-Con once. I actually missed that, but, uh, but still, uh, clearly the, uh, the issue is not resolved, like a year ago straight from China. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an issue that's, uh, I mean, I don't know if Nintendo is ever going to come out and straight, straight up acknowledge it, but, I mean, we've seen, we, we've seen, uh, companies like Apple, I think, yeah, there's been cases where they've kind of caved to, uh, uh, to, to, you know, to basically consumer pressure for repairs and such like, uh, like MacBooks have an ongoing issue with their keyboards or something, uh, where like keyboards are just failing or something like that. Um, mine's fine. I seem, I somehow managed to dodge all of the hardware issues on, on hardware. I don't really care about, but when it comes to hardware I use all the time, like my PC shit's breaking all the time, man. <laughs> Is anyone else picturing the left Twix versus the right Twix factories here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Uh, as for uh, oh, bad antenna. So you got yours. Uh, you got yours fixed. Um, so you know that's it's it's an issue that is being picked up again. I I I feel for any of you guys who might have a uh, who might have a switch where this is actually happening, but at least you know that uh, that you can go and for fourteen for fourteen ninety nine. And a, and a little bit of a can-do attitude, not even that much, because they literally provide all the tools. <laughs> you could just, you could just fix the shit yourself. Uh, I actually wonder uh, if uh, the quality of the Joy Cons, like this Joy Con here, ends up being better than the quality of the uh, uh, the one that ships with it. No reason to really expect that it would be, but still, it's it's possible. Maybe they use a better plunger or whatever to to as you. Um, but yeah, so if you're gonna fix that, might as well do a case and D pad swap at the same time. A case swap. Oh yeah, on the whole controller. Yeah, it's true, huh? You could do it on the whole Joy-Con if you wanted to. There's some wild shit that people make that you can uh, um uh to customize your Switch and whatnot, which is what you did. Oh, did you actually do a full on Switch like? Uh, uh, did you do a, a, oh, the purple, clear purple set for the whole switch for the whole, the case or just the joy cons. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for this answer. <laughs> case and joy cons. Oh my God. Well, I'm going to need to see pictures of this. <laughs> Whenever you get a chance. Uh, yeah. Wow. Purple and clear. That sounds sexy. Oh my God. Can you add some RGB to it? <laughs> Just like the like back like lights up or something like that. Uh, so next up. Oh man. This is this is actually kind of an interesting story. Uh oh, it looks like oh, it looks like that. Let's go and pull that up real quick. 
Oh god, I just god damn it. Copying links from fucking Twitch chat is hard. Oh, that is that is sexy. Here we go. Pause this open for everyone to see. That's uh that's nice. Do you have the uh the colored uh uh buttons like that as well? That is really sexy. Yeah, that is really sexy. It looks like you know what? I, I think I actually have a Game Boy that looks exactly like this. Like seriously, I have I have a Game Boy that, that's clear, and I want to say it's actually purple as well, which means I do have to get this case and put it on my Switch because I need to have I need to have a uh, a magic set. That's what they were going for. Oh my god. There was a Game Boy color that thing. I have that gap. Yeah. Then then yes, that is the that is the Game Boy color that I have. Holy shit, it's easy to mess up. Okay. Will you do will we, I'll pay you to do it for me. <laughs> All right. Nostalgia boner territory. I know. Just I just wanted to look like my Game Boy color. Why? Because I just wanted it to, but why? There's no good reason. Nostalgia boner. That's all it was. I just got I just had to get it out. Yeah. Next time you're in town, <laughs> okay, all right, I'll bring it down. We'll make a whole thing out of it. <laughs> I we used the switch last time I was there, so shit. Uh next up, Ubisoft. Did you guys catch this? Uh PC passes Ubi uh, P uh, PC passes PS4 to become Ubisoft's top revenue generator. So what does this mean? It just means that PC Master Race, really, for U Ubisoft, uh, didn't they at one point in time criticize, uh, uh, they said something of the fact of like how people are, how PC is full of piracy or something like that. That was two years ago, I think. Uh, they had made a big deal out of, uh, out of that. But then they figured out, they figured out how to combat DRM or uh, piracy. They basically just like made, ga made a game as a service with like uh, 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 Rainbow Six and then uh, Siege. And then they actually made content for it. Wow, who the thunk? Games as a service where they actually made content for it, and they uh, and they kept following up with that. Everybody, everybody that I talk to that plays um, that plays uh, 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 Rainbow Six Siege has been, in general, pretty satisfied with it. And even if they're not satisfied with it totally, they still manage to have like a hun hundreds of hours in it. So I really don't know if they're like really unsatisfied or they're just kind of upset about a recent update or something. Uh, I think you said a while back that PC was their main dev platform, so games are made to run on PC and then later ported to consoles. Um, the the Uplay launcher, yeah, yeah. So so this this just shows that their uh, that that games as a service is something that could reason, that that actually works uh, if you if you man maintain it and you manage it. Uh, it also shows that people are willing to spend a whole lot of money. Uh, uh, and continue spending money on games uh, like you know Rainbow Six Siege, um, and uh, what other games? Uh, is I haven't played Anno uh, eighteen hundred. I don't know anything about their their online support in terms of uh, uh, DRM, not DRM, but uh, but uh, markets and um, you know cash shops and whatnot. How can that piracy make a game people enjoy and will want to give you my money uh, to own? Who'd have though? Wait, what? Uh, I think I read that wrong. Uh, <laughs> Unicorn skins for Siege, the Division 2. Yeah, just make just make good games and, ma and maintain them and put out updates and everything and people will, well one, it's kind of hard to pirate a game that is constantly getting updated um, unless you somehow find a way to play it by yourself, which a game like, you know, Siege is not something you can necessarily just fire up and play solo without having any kind of, uh, uh, to experience, you can't experience it online, uh, can't, can't have the online experience by yourself. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege has issues, but Ubisoft demonstrate they're willing to help work, such improve, update their game so people will work with them. Um, wait, what? What the hell color toe that is? What, what the fuck? That's, this is the wrong podcast. Uh, <laughs> PC has a platform is getting teacher now, te cheaper now, uh, with AMD new stuff, Ryzen 3200 GPUs. Yeah, 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 no, that's true. Like, uh, the new AMD stuff is pretty cheap. Uh, and, and so I guess people are or jumping on uh, uh, making build new PCs or I guess maintaining PCs or something versus consoles and whatnot. Um, well, keyboard does not enjoy Twitch chat there. They also sat uh, uh, as has created for a year to make it not suck, and that made a huge difference. So yeah, so look, look at that. So Uplay or Ubisoft just uh, just making good games, I guess, <laughs> and updating it, updating those games. Uh, it turns out people are willing to pay for that kind of stuff. Wow! Wow! Uh, 3200G is also a $100 processor, so you can get a full system on a 500 range with it. 
By the way, it feels like the power curve for PC seems to be evening out now too. I, I, I kind of feel like that as well. I don't feel like the jumps are quite as significant as they used to be. But at the same time, like I, I, I think it could also be optimization that uh, that is helping kind of curb that uh, that power, you know, curve, I guess uh, it's, it's we're like, you know, you get like think about any game, any game console that comes out and the first game is, you know, it's go. Oh, yeah, it's a cool game, whatever you play the game. And then like the third installment of that game, like the best example is as Mario Brothers one and then Mario Brothers three. Like that really shows like how much they learned on how to take advantage of a platform, optimize gameplay and everything like that in order to make a game like Mario Bros. 3 work on the same platform as Mario Bros. 1. Uh, and, you know, PC is the same thing. It's like, you know, game games get optimized as they get released because we all know the optimization is always the last step in any kind of development process. Uh, sometimes they skip it. Uh, and so, yeah, having that kind of optimization and all that is, uh, uh, is probably helping soften the, uh, that, that feel that you're falling behind in terms of hardware. Um, they shit the bed with, uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey XP boost and some custom missions. And I said, but Ubisoft did pull a bunch of user-generated content in Assassin's Creed because it was letting people get a, a free bunch of XP for missions in-game without buying their XP-boosting microtransactions. Well, that's why. <laughs> Clearly, there's not enough outrage there because it's still the uh, it's still their most profitable platform. Yeah, guys. Jeez. Bitch more. So yeah, you play is uh, or Ub Ubisoft is very happy and will probably continue to build on. Um, of basically continue to support their PC games, which is a good thing, right? Overall, it's a good thing, I guess. I have the only you play game I played really, I mean, really overall on the lifetime of you play has been Trials, and that's not even Ubisoft, really. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so I'm 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 kind of I'm I'm not really the source of uh, uh of info here. Um and Guns isn't here to tell me all about Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> uh let's see. Where should I go next? Let's do We've talked about Games Workshop before. And one of the things that I, one of the things that I have to say about Games Workshop is that they fucking do. They just will whore out the IP, the the 40k IP to anybody. Like, did you just did you, did you just start a game company with you and your friend? Here you go, make a Warhammer 40k game. There's so many licenses out there for 40k. It's it's almost like it's it's just like who who doesn't have like if you don't have a, a license for 40k to make something based off of the 40k universe officially, then what are you doing with your life? Like, you're nobody. <laughs> you're the only person in the world who doesn't have a license to do something with the Warhammer 40k franchise. Well, we may actually get something quality uh, in the future. The creator of Man in the High Castle is bringing Warhammer 40k to live action TV. This sounds awesome. Uh... No, I'm no, no. I'm reporting on the news, Brian. I don't care about this shit. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so, uh, Man in the High Castle is an uh, it's an alternate reality, dystopian future where a type of uh, uh, I don't want to spoil it because I didn't really watch the whole thing, but I so I can't spoil too much. But all I can say is basically that. Um, a lot of my friends do enjoy the game, or sorry, the, uh, the show. The first five episodes were so fucking boring that I just could not, I could not hang on for the rest of the season. I've heard it got really good. Oh yeah, TLDR, the, uh, the Nazis won. That's the whole point. That's the alternate reality is that the Nazis won. There you go. Um, what was that new order without the same characters? Oh, there you go. But visually, it is a fantastic looking show. So if you just watch, if you just watch shows for like the visual porn, Man in the High Castle is a good looking show. Um, so I'm hoping that they can bring some of that same grittiness to the 40K franchise from a live action perspective, because I do feel like they, if, if the creator of one thing and has made this universe that looks gritty and dirty and you just feel like just, you could really feel the mood of, of the setting that they're, they're showing you on the show. Uh, I feel like that would translate pretty well to uh, 
to Warhammer 40k. It's the it's it's the uh, I guess it's going to be come down to what the ships and and basically all the the CG related things end up looking like like that's going to be the make it or break it for a lot of people, a lot of folks. Uh, but we already have so many space epics and operas and everything in terms of shows uh, that are doing pretty well visually. So. No way to make power. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Power armor, man. That's gonna be the hardest thing to like really make. Like all their armor, the orcs. I mean, like everything is gonna be. Uh, well, we know the orcs might look pretty good because of Warcraft. One of the Warcraft movie has a pretty good looking orcs. Um, so maybe let's see. Uh, you are personally cautiously hopeful for this. I would be as well because again, they do put out the they do allow license out the uh, 40k license uh, all over the place, and so. But this is the this is one of the few times where you look at where I can look at this and say, all right, this this could actually have some uh, like this could actually go somewhere. Um, it's making the proportions look cool and not silly on live action. Oh man, yeah, the proportions are gonna be rough for a lot of people to to stomach because <laughs> the proportions are really ridiculous. Uh, if they if they if they play it down too much, if they play it down too much, then legit fans are not gonna be into it. It's like, hold on a second, where are my fucking shoulders at, right? If they, uh, if they, if, if they actually follow through and you have these huge shoulders and all this stuff similar to what you see in this character's wearing here, uh, then this might not, uh, then it, then it might look corny, right? Um, I don't know if this story is really a good, good fit for a TV series. It's main, it's, uh, it's a man's slow descent into madness and radicalism. See, that sounds great. <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? That part, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Who doesn't want to watch uh, someone's slow, slow descent into madness and uh, radicalism? Slow, okay, okay, the slow part, that's important. That, that, you're right, you're right, that part's probably pretty important. Uh, I don't know much about the 40k universe, personally. Uh, everything I know about it, it seems like very difficult to follow and very convoluted and like super deep. And I've been told that means that you understand the universe. And so I think I'll just leave it at that and just go from there. It goes deep. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you don't understand it? Then you get it. There you go. Uh, shoulder gate. Oh, man. Coin it now. Coin it now. Let's see. There's been a report, a stream report. We're just going to start just, just punching through the news. This is easy. This is, this is an easy day. I like this. We're actually going through pretty quickly. We're slow the fuck down. Uh, so... Get that URL where you switch shouldergate.com. Um, Streamlabs using NewZoo. NewZoo is an analytics company that gathers data on um, on a number of stream platforms, video distribution platforms. Um, inflate those minutes watched. The uh, so they they put out a what's the Streamlabs quarter two 2019 live streaming industry report, and the report is pretty extensive. You could take all this as gospel, or you could take it with a grain of salt, whatever works for you. I'm just going to read out a couple of uh, interesting points that, uh, that were presented in this. I don't know how Newzoo acquires its, its, uh, its numbers and its data to put all this stuff together. And because I don't know that, I cannot vouch for its authenticity. But these types of numbers come out all the time. Like these types of, uh, of um you know, analytics and, and data that comes out of, uh, for various platforms or businesses or industries or whatever, these types of things come out all the time. And, uh, and so I have to give, I have to give some kind of credit and some kind of, uh, um, uh, yeah, basically some kind of credit that, that it's probably at least somewhat accurate. Uh, so some of the bullet points from this is that, uh, Riot Games has overtaken Epic as the most watched publisher on Twitch for quarter two, 2019. And that is largely in part, uh, do in part uh, for the uh, uh, what is it called again? <laughs> team fight tactics TFT. It's because team fight tactics had blown up as big as it did towards the end of the quarter. That uh, that it's um, well, it basically dethroned. Yeah, auto chess. Yep, auto chess. Uh, it has dethroned uh, uh, ninja. Let's say ninja. Uh, Fortnite, and so now Fortnite is technically, I guess, on a downturn. Uh, and that could just be because the game is kind of losing its flavor. Other games are competing. Um, people are bored of it. Who knows? Who knows whatever the reasons are? Or because auto chess is the hot shit, and some of the bigger streamers who typically would stream one thing have, uh, have switched to something else. Now, this could all change 
this can all change by the end of the next quarter because this quarter includes includes a chunk of summer and so all the kids are home playing Fortnite, probably streaming it as well and so the numbers could definitely flip uh come the end of uh summer uh <laughs> out next week Fortnite auto royale i'm actually surprised they haven't because that's how i mean i mean as all as basically all of you guys know that is how uh Fortnite battle royale came out it was just basically it, it, they, they started off with one game and they were like wow this isn't working hey this other thing's pretty popular let's take our assets do a little flip and then uh and then try to make some money and they ended up making a shitload of money so much money they actually pissed everyone off with their epic game store bullshit uh see also shows that twitch this is no surprise twitch is the leading platform you can see numbers right here uh it is a leading platform with our streams at 94.7 million uh and uh youtube live at 13.2 million and mixer at 12 million now the twitch numbers i'm not surprised i'm not surprised that twitch of course it's the biggest streaming platform that's that's a no-brainer uh i'm i'm actually surprised that that youtube live and mixer are so close um uh, why is it facebook on here i thought they were top i'm willing to bet that facebook is not on here because uh newsu either doesn't have access to the data and, and that could be because facebook doesn't want to give it out uh for i mean i don't know if you guys have noticed but facebook's been under fire quite a bit about uh uh, about privacy, so maybe they just decided we're not going to give any data out for anything. Um, also, I don't know if Facebook really has a method of differentiating between a video game stream and, um, like in terms of the data, uh, and just a, oh, I'm streaming from my phone or something like that, right? Whereas on Twitch and on YouTube Live and on Mixer, uh, you could pretty much guess that at the very minimum, like 25 to 50 percent of those streams are going to be uh gaming related uh whether you can actually compare these things apples to apples to apples whereas facebook live it might just be like five percent of their streams or even less honestly is gaming related so so yeah so you got privacy that old face app <laughs> i didn't include the face app into today's news because i didn't really feel like it was relevant at all uh but yes if you take a picture of your face using the face app they technically have in their terms of service that they can they own uh indefinitely your likeness and your name. And that's a big deal. This is a little bit of a tangent, but it's fine. Um, because other sites like Instagram or whatever will say that uh, uh that they own the rights to the image and the likeness, right? Which is normal, but when they include the red flag is when they include your name. Because that means that, like, I guess, Cardi B, right? That was the one that I saw pop up. And yeah, there's just so many celebs jumped on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because, like, someone like Cardi B or some other celebrity that maybe you like, okay, uh, is uh, took the picture and posted it. Well, now that company can, I guess, legally, I mean, obviously, they're going to have to fight for it. Because even though it's in their terms of service, they're going to have to justify that they actually legally can put that there and use somebody else's likeness. So I'm sure we'll probably see some lawsuits pop out from this uh, if they decide to actually uh, you know, milk that by maybe putting a commercial. It's like, oh, hey, this is where, uh, uh, um, this is where your favorite, you know, actor or actress or singer or songwriter, or whatever, uh, uh, this is the app that they use, use this app and they use it in advertising and all that good stuff. Uh, see like this is where TOS claims get shit on. Yes. Yeah. It's, this is, I mean, this, this is, this is something that, and, and this, again, this all, it's all going to boil down to, uh, whether or not they try to push push the limit here like actually use a popular celebrity or popular somebody somebody with money like use their likeness in order to push a product that's when we'll see we'll, we'll see the claws come out we'll see what really happens uh and this is how yeah deep fakes takes takes uh, takes over yeah i mean just 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 kind of think about this from the perspective of like a game developer something that's close to home right uh if you're a game developer, like let's say Blizzard is working on a new game and they want to have, uh, they want a bunch of faces for their NPCs that they're going to have in, in their games. Um, well, maybe instead of like just literally going through and making a bunch of faces or using an algorithm to generate faces or whatever, like they'll, they'll just they'll just buy a bunch of faces and uh, and mask them on somehow, uh, and they can just buy them from the face app folks. And maybe face apps like, oh yeah, we got these like high profile. 
you know, faces that you recognize, you know, celebrities and whatnot. And we'll sell you this pack of like 500 celebrities that have used our app. Uh, and you could use those for whatever you want in, in the game. It'll cost you X amount of thousands of dollars or whatever. Like that, that's how that works. Like they could just basically sell it, package and sell it, uh, license it out to, to other companies for whatever reasons. Uh, and, and yeah, it's just, um, books full of faces. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a thing. All your, all those faces, man, catalog somewhere. The, the deep fakes thing is, is kind of one of the scariest things though, because that shit is getting really good. Uh, moving on with this though. So really, I mean, it, from a numbers perspective, the only thing that really took, took, I got me as a shock was that DLive have had any amount of hours watched. <laughs> And also, it says our hour stream by platform quarter two, uh, 2019. It says 12 million, 13 million, 94 million. And then down here, it says uh, hour stream on DLive, 3.2 million. So they're not not quite big enough to be up in this uh, in this section here. Uh, but DLive is a uh, they they do mostly uh, video game related stuff. But they're they're the newcomers, so that's why they're singled out here. So that you could see how they're performing to to everyone else. And yes, it's it's basically PewDiePie's platform. You never heard of DLive? Yeah. <laughs> That means you haven't watched all the episodes of Just News, dude. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty much probably supported by uh, uh, by PewDiePie, pretty much. Uh, this is eleven average viewers per D live stream. Just for the record, the average the average users for uh, the average viewers for Twitch is twenty eight. So if you're if you're a streamer and you are you have more than twenty eight people watching your stream, congratulations. You are above the average and that average will probably drop after this summer because again, with more, with more people being out of school and having more time during the summer, uh, they will probably, um, uh, probably stream and, uh, and that's going to, well, they're going to stream to probably nobody. And that means the average is going to go down. So there you go. Ah, <sighs> let's see. That's, that's kind of, I mean, that's really kind of it. Like there's, there's a number of, if you want to go through and, 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 and pick apart some of the stats and whatnot, there's, uh, there's the official release here from Streamlabs. There's also an article that I'll include in the, uh, in the comments below, uh, or sorry, in the description below, uh, where you can go through and see, uh, Esports Observer did a pretty good write-up breaking down a, um, a bunch of stats from this, but, uh, it's not the end of, it's not the end of Twitch. It just means that, uh, that other platforms are starting to starting to grab some of that some of that viewership, but there's still a long way to go before anything anything significant happens to Twitch. Much to some of y'all's chagrin, uh, <laughs> Cyberpunk is closing in both as a game as, as well as a real state of our world. Companies are already borderline controlling countries. Prepare now; those runner skills shall be profitable in the future. Uh, I know it's DL site, not DLive. Yeah, DLive. We 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 covered it like uh, uh probably five episodes ago of Just News, uh, where we talked a little bit. Actually, we took a little tour of uh, of DLive and um and uh and yeah, just, just just the way they do their um their cryptocurrency. I forget the name of the cryptocurrency is, but they have their own currency essentially that you use to uh to throw around. It's like bits basically, but I believe it's actual legit currency that you could convert. Uh, and use elsewhere. If that's your kind of thing. A man ship all aboard the mixer train. Well, mixer's picking up. Mixer's getting more, more popular. So you never know. Here in like five years, it might be a thing. And lastly, because it really wasn't a crazy news week, but this was definitely the craziest shit that's come up and continues to be crazy. Uh... <laughs> Well, let me just say, my birthday is September 20th, and I've already gotten a couple invitations on where I should spend my birthday, specifically at Area 51, located in Nevada, just north of, uh, just outside of Las Vegas. Now, there's going to be a big party there. 1.7 million people are going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you if you run with it if you run like if you do the Naruto run then you could dodge bullets or whatever oh my god <laughs> so this is a real thing uh well real in that like really 1.7 million people said that they're going and 1.2 million people said they're interested so 3 million people have said this is the most popular thing that you that Facebook has done 
outside of outside of privacy scrutiny. Uh, <laughs> this is the most popular thing that this website has had in a long time. I cannot remember the last time I talked about something that happened on Facebook that was actually catching up, uh, like catching headlines. Um, it's reels and we're really gonna get some aliens. When 1.7 million people, and this is, this is still two months away. This is still two months away. And it's the topic of every other fucking meme that, that's, uh, that's popped out in the past week. So it's, everybody knows about it. More people are going to be, are, are going to be, you know, clued in on what's going on here. I am genuinely curious how many people will show up when you have 3 million people saying, or, or at least acknowledging that this is something that it, that it, that is happening. How many of those 3 million people will actually show up? I've seen, I've seen a hundred thousand I've seen a hundred thousand. Uh, I don't think 10, I think it'd be more than 10 for sure. I don't think a hundred thousand because that's like, uh, that's, that's mass. That's burning man number. That's bigger than burning man. Uh, so I don't think a hundred thousand is going to happen. Um, assuming they don't get shot. I just want to know, uh, what would they plan to do if they actually got to the door? Like it's <laughs> like, it's not going to be locked. Yeah. There's, there's, there's really not a whole lot that they can do because yeah, the door, I mean, doors are going to be locked, but I mean, like if you think about, I guess if you think about people rushing across a giant desert, uh, across some landing strips and, uh, right into, uh, right into some hangars. <sighs> yeah, they know about it. They absolutely know about it. Are you kidding me? Of course they do. And yeah, yeah. Dr. Dibbs, like, I wonder what, what is the Air Force going to do? How are they going to... Uh, yeah, oh, that's right, they did respond. Yeah, it's a, it's a... What do they say? They did say something uh, about it. I think they just acknowledged it. I, I can't remember. Um, this is a Russian plot. <laughs> it would be a bad idea. Yeah, it would be a bad idea. It would absolutely be a bad idea. You can't even... You can't even hang out and look like, look like outside of the fence without getting harassed. You think they're going to let people just go run and storming in? Uh, but I will tell you, though, they will be prepared. On September 20th, they are going to be absolutely prepared uh, for something to go down. They will more than likely have as much non-lethal stuff available to them to make sure that they don't... Because even if these dicks storm the place, if they come out guns blazing and actually mow down a bunch of folks... That is not a good look. Uh, yes, they're going to start with something like that, Marius. They're, they're going to start with how do we stop people from getting there? Because that will at least deter a bunch of folks from even attempting to go. If they if they go and there's a roadblock, um, if they, if there's a roadblock, they, they might just be like, mm, maybe instead of trying to like, I don't know, drive around the roadblock with all this military police and everything, maybe we'll just go home and just like, fuck it. They can use deadly force. Yeah, they can. they can use deadly force. But that would still be a really good look. I uh, really sorry. Uh, so, yeah, that would not be a really good look. <laughs> Damn it, doctor. Uh, those Air Force boys don't mess around. I use to work with them as a the Navy. They are hella strict. They almost beat my ass because I stepped on a, a red line accidentally. I've had different experience with the Air Force folks. <laughs> I, I, I've had different experience with the Chair Force. All right, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> really, my one, my one experience with actual Air Force dudes deployed were in my same exact fucking job. When I was out in the field, they had better gear and they were just fucking chilling. So yes, my experience has been that these guys are lazy, but I know they're not because I have family and shit that's in the Air Force, so I'm sure they work hard. Um, fire hose. They're going to use that sonic, that sonic gun that's going to basically like make your ears explode or whatever. That make you feel pain all over your body. You've seen those things? It's like, it's like an actual like ray gun almost where it doesn't necessarily cause death and destruction. It just causes you to feel pain all over your body. It's absolutely insane. They're probably going to bring all that crazy shit up. The brown tone gun. Oh my god. You're just mad because we had good stuff. Yes! Yes! The sonic diarrhea gun. Absolutely. 5G weaponized for the first time in Nevada 2019. All they did was turn it on. It didn't take much. I thought that was the truck mounted microwave. What? I don't remember. The Area 51 area techs are like, oh my god, we have willing test subjects. Yeah, actually. 
I September 20 is only two months away, and I have absolutely no idea if this is actually gonna happen. Because, because a person is smart, but people are panicky and stupid, and you know it. They're gonna do some dumb shit. <laughs> They're gonna, somebody's gonna do some dumb shit. Get used to learning your microwaves make you feel like you're on fire. Yes, flashy thingy. Uh, <laughs> they'll make a mockery out of everyone. Uh, have aliens take them out with cool alien sec. <laughs> uh, they run in and they get teleported out. They run in and get teleported out. It's like Groundhog Day. They just keep on starting over at the fence. I can't move. Why can't I get in? Meanwhile, everyone else is still like, no one else really sees any time pass. And so they're like, no, we were going in and we were being teleported out. It's like, oh, sure you were, bud. You just didn't want to run through. Okay, we get it. Um, I just want to see the AC-130 gunship fuck them up. Hey, if you want to see a gunship fuck something up, you need to talk to my boy to A-10. Get some of that burn. That will do it. The time 20 comes along and Area 51 suddenly lowers itself underground and closes the anger door above. That's, that's, that's a possibility. I, man, what is going to happen? I'm, I'm genuinely curious, man. I really, I really want to see this. I really want to see what happens. I think, I, here's what I think. I think that some, hmm, let's say 5,000 people. I say like some 5,000 people are going to show up with the majority of them having camped there for longer than the road, the, the roadblocks have been up. Uh, and they're not gonna do anything. They're not gonna do anything. I think there's gonna be probably a good, a good, a good line, a good convoy of some pretty intimidating looking vehicles. And I don't think anyone's gonna risk trying to jump the fence and, and, and make a run for it. I don't think it's gonna happen. The people will fly drones in and they will all lose their drones. Oh man, yeah. Are you kidding me? Jamming a drone is easy for the military. That's gonna be the, that's gonna be the, the, that's going to be the most hilarious thing. People fucking flying. No one's going to do it. Anybody that owns a drone that will have any significant value is not going to fly. They're going to know that they can't just fly into some area. The shit's going to get taken down. Like, like not going to get shot. It's just going to flip a switch. It's going to like, boop, and that's it. People are dumb. Yes. But I don't think anyone, no one's going to, no one's going to, no one's going to jump the fence. No one's going to jump the fence. Uh, DJ, I won't let you fly in there now anyway now. Oh, do they actually have the GPS, uh, GPS locked so you can't actually, uh, you can't actually fly it in? Oh my god. Yeah, I, I did see this. <sighs> this is the Storm, Storm the Area 51 vehicle fleet. We got the Yeet truck. We'll be launched during the first Kyle wave, like that scene from Too Fast, Too Furious, able to take four or five Kyles through defenses safely. Next up is the Subaru. Any except for the BRZ. Distract guards with two-step backfire. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Can conjure vape clouds, which will perfectly cover the Naruto runners. <laughs> the Volvo tank. Which, by the way, yes, these Volvos are fucking tanks. Uh, hipsters will use these to sweep hidden mines. Can sleep approximately 50 mines, after which the hipster will need to fill up and do it again. <laughs> Mustang kamikaze pilots, drivers will plow through M2 nests, taking out the gunner, his team, his wife, and her Jody. Godspeed, Mustang pilots. Godspeed. Oh, man. Just, see? I mean, thankfully, thankfully, this crazy thing happened because these fucking memes are hilarious. So good. That's so good. Oh, man. Poetry. Yes. <sighs> so September 20th, my birthday. <laughs> somebody, somebody, you know what? Hell, here's how it's going to hit close to home. Some IRL fucking streamer is going to be on site. Absolutely. Because this is a perfect opportunity to get a shitload of views. So that's going to be the, one of the biggest things you're going to see out there. Of that 5,000 folks that are going to be out there, you're going to see a pretty significant percentage of people that are going to try to stream from out there. And, you know, and capture a bunch of new viewers and whatnot. Is Area 51 a sell dead zone? Probably. Probably. I don't know. I, have, I've, I, I think I've driven... No. I used to, I mean, I used to fucking live out there, but I couldn't tell you if I've ever driven past Area 51, like the iconic Area 51 or what, but I've driven all around 
uh, Nels Air Force Base um, to get like two other, you know, parts of the Nevada, but that's pretty much it. Uh, Dr. Disrespect will walk on through and get Twitch banned for two weeks. See, that's all it takes. They're going to get more followers. His, yeah, it's his second. That'll be his second. His second uh, IRL live stream. His first one, he got kicked out of E3. His second one, he's going to get kicked out of uh, <laughs> the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah well we'll see what happens september 20th all right put it on your calendars put it on your calendars because it's my birthday and also because we want to see who's dumb enough to jump the fence i didn't know walking through a restricted government controlled facility was against the law alex is fired <laughs> alex has been fired again oh man all right, guys, that's all the news I had. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff. I actually kind of like kind of I kind of went right through it. Yeah, I kind of burned right through it. So there you go. Storm Area 51. That was the biggest news of the week. Really? That's the biggest news in terms of like how many people fucking know about it. Three million people. Jesus Christ. I bet it's on the 19th. I'll be there. I want to party with some aliens. Do it. Do it. Does the fence have barbed wire? Maybe. Probably Constantino wire, honestly. Barbed wire is bitches. That's easy. That's easy. All right, guys, that's it. If you're watching live, I'll be back right after I push this button. If you're watching at home, thank you so much for watching at home, outside of Twitch. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. This is chat. I'll see you guys later. Boop!